All right, I want to show you guys what I got going on in here in my living room. Uh, it's a little trashy, but it's okay. So, um, this is just like a, a dresser where I took the top two drawers out. I supported it underneath with a board. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Um, because this is just like cardboard stuff. But it's, it's doing all right for now. Basically, over here I got, you know, an Xbox and a Wii. And a Roku, that's what my mom uses. She she watches Sling and she uses this for everything, Netflix and Sling and whatnot. This is a broad link RM mini thing. And what it does is it just emits IR signals. And that way you can control the Roku with IR, but the remote isn't, you know, that you get with it isn't IR, it's Wi-Fi. Um, but that way we can use an app when the thing dies or whatever and I also have where is that thing actually seriously where is that thing oh man it's all the way over here maybe that's why it's not working so well so I have this thing which is a IR repeater and basically when you send something to that it sends it all the way up here uh, to this thing which then you know blasts the TV that's pretty useful. Most of the stuff is down here that you need the IR blaster for, but, uh, you know, you got to be able to get to the TV. I think it comes out of the top here. Anyway, I got a cheap little switch. It's only a 10-100 switch, but that's all that anyone needs. I, I was in the gigabit game for a while, but it's just your internet is so far below megabit's li limit that unless you're doing some crazy NAS stuff, you don't even need gigabit. I mean... I even use the Ethernet port on this computer. This is a computer, by the way. The Ethernet com port on this computer broke anyway, so I just have a USB little thing that converts it to Ethernet to take care of that. Uh, you can see this computer. It's kind of old, and it's a slim kind, but the power supply died in it, so I just have an external power supply. You can see some wires poking out. Not the safest thing in the world, but we just don't move it around that much. Now, it is a little bit of a rat's nest back here. I used to have the Xbox in this spot, and it was blocking the wires, but it was also, like, pushing up against the power strip, um, and that was kind of annoying. And I have a power strip up here so that it's easy to plug and unplug things, so it kind of defeated the purpose to have the Xbox in the way. Anyway, you can see everything's plugged in. Uh, there's a power strip behind the entertainment center as well. Um, and then there's this. This is for the Chromecast. I got the Chromecast Ultra, which has an Ethernet port on it, because I don't trust our Wi-Fi enough for something that I use all the time. I've been using the Chromecast a lot. Uh, it's easier than being logged in on the computer and switching accounts. We can all just have our own YouTube or Netflix, whatever account, and then stream it to the... What are you doing, dog? You freaking out? What you want? What you want? What you want? What you want? I'm gonna get you! Arrgh. You silly dog. Alright. Anyway, I got a wireless Wii thing. Oh, we recently just redis- We recently rediscovered the Wii. Um, I bought an- I had to buy another one, not a new one. A used one, because my old Wii, the disk drive was loose, so it would go brrrr the whole time it was running. It kind of sucked. Um, and we got all the, all the silly little games, you know, we, you know, we got all the silly little games. This one's backwards. I don't like that. You know, we got Smooth Moves, Price is Right, Jeopardy, Family Feud, Wheel of Fortune, all the normal stuff. I already had Mario Kart, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, House of the Dead, Good Shooting Game, Paper Mario. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not, I'm not that into it. This Tamagotchi game was supposed to be like Mario Party, but it was kind of lame. And we got Mario Party 8. Um, I bought Mario Party 9, but it didn't work. But then I remembered that Mario Party 9 is the one where you're all in the car together. And that's kind of lame. It's lame, except in the new one, the Mario Party 10 for the Wii U, where, you know, it's you guys versus Bowser. That's actually pretty cool. And I want to play that, but I couldn't even get a Wii U if I wanted right now because they're all sold out everywhere for Christmas and stuff. I mean, Christmas is over, but anyway... So I have all that stuff, but I also have one other thing, which used to be in here, but I put it in our, like, server cabinet thing. I don't know how well you guys can see. 
not that well. So I got this new router, pretty good. Um, it's the T-Mobile cell spot, but I hacked it to be a full Asus AC1900, so that's pretty good. I didn't put DDWRT on it because I just don't need it, but I was at the step where I could have done that. Um, it does feel like it's improved our Wi-Fi performance. I didn't get it so that the Wi-Fi would be better. I got it so that I could have this and then use our old router as another access point in the house to have, you know, better reception. But I don't even think I need it now because it has actually been better. So there's that. There's our gigabit switch. Uh, if that dies, I'm going to be buying a megabit. I might even buy a megabit one anyway just so I can have more ports because that's only eight. And uh, you can see that they're all filled. <laughs> I have a little thing up here letting me know where each cable goes because there's, uh, there's wall plates behind there and there's a six wall plate and a two wall plate. And this basically just says where they go. Anyway, this is the thing I was talking about. It's a Hapaj Broadway thing. And what it does is it's connected to the cable. And I don't know if you guys can see over there. Yeah, that black thing is an antenna and it has a cable that goes all the way behind the fridge and connects to that. And these antennas aren't doing anything because I have it hooked up to ethernet, but it could do Wi-Fi. Basically what it does is it takes the antenna channels and turns it into a web page where you can watch them. So let's go back in here. And I'm gonna show you guys how this Broadlink thing works right now. Basically, there's this app right here. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. So you watch the infrared re receiver, whatever. Oh, I can't see. Watch it. I'm going to hit switch. You can see that it picked up. And now we're switching inputs. I'm going to press it again to go to the home theater PC. I need to do that for this one. Whoa, I almost slipped. Is the dog OK? Hover. What are you doing in there? I didn't know that I locked you in. You silly. You silly dog. Anyway. Um, I have to do that for the home theater PC, but switching to the Chromecast, I can just start casting to it using the HDMI CEC settings, whatever it is. All right, so I'm turning the computer on. Now check this out. Open Chrome. I have it set in tablet mode because that's nice and easy when you're using a home theater PC. All right, let's get a little closer here. So you can see I've got this distan.tv, which it kind of searches the thing. Oh, I got to type this in for real. All right, there we go. So anyway, you type in your pin. Device is waking up. I put it so that it goes to sleep every 15 minutes. It doesn't always seem to work, but anyway. You can see we've got our channels here, and you just click it. It takes a second to load. It takes a long second to load. You can see the circle spinning in the top. Watching, if and then it does work. And like, and you can see it's pretty good quality. So now we can access the TV, antenna TV, anywhere in the house with only one antenna. Now this TV has its own antenna. You can probably see in the window there, <laughs> and the cable just goes here. I didn't move it, so we've got two. But um, now my mom or, what, or whatever can watch football games in her room, and you know the rest of us can keep watching what we were watching in the living room. Or she can watch in the living room if no one else is here or if, you know, two people are watching the TV. Pretty cool. Pretty annoying, though, because there's no app for this. Like, there's sort of an Android app. So there's sort of an app. It's an unofficial app, but it works just fine. I can't see again. It works just fine. So let's go back to, say, this channel. Takes a while to load. As I said before, but it does work. But there's no way, first of all, you can't do anything in here, which makes sense. It's live TV. It's not like you can pause it. Although you can record and rewind and stuff on the Distan TV, I think. 
Um, but there's no way to push it to the Chromecast. There's no app for the Roku. So I, I need an Android box or a computer to be able to show it on the TV. A computer can Chromecast the tab just fine. Works great. Um, but my mom has a little Windows tablet, so that's probably fine for her. Uh, but check this out. See? I don't even need to switch it. To, well, let me turn the TV off. Or computer off. I usually sleep the PC. It'll sleep on its own after a little bit. Anyway. So, I've, I'm kind of already casting, but let's stop casting. And let's restart casting. Right? In the living room. Click it. Automatically switches. Pretty dang cool, to be honest. Um, Different genres. Yeah, and YouTube sometimes remembers your position, which is great. So, that's what I got going on in my living room and server room type thing. This RM Mini, it's great um, because now I don't have to get up to get the remote. I mean, we have a remote. And I actually have this thing. Which my sister put a bow on it. It's a remote that's supposed to connect to the computer, but it always kind of was garbage. So it's just a remote now. But the good thing about it is you can teach it um, IR command. So you just press, uh, I don't know, there's some sequence and you can say, I want one, uh, I want volume to always control the TV. So volume up is going to be the TV. But the arrows will always be the Roku, for example, and home will be the Roku. It's, it's not too bad. Would you hush? You're not going anywhere. No. Stop bothering me. Stop bothering me, puppy. He's a good but stop whining. All right. Um, so I like remotes that do that. I've had the Logitech. It's in here somewhere. This Logitech thing with a hub. It's sort of similar to the situation we got going on where this remote just connects to this and this thing will blast IR. Pretty decent idea, except they're really limiting on like how you teach it commands and stuff. It's kind of annoying, like you gotta search for your device, and I just hate that. The way that this thing learns is you press a button on the app, and it says, waiting. And then you press a button on your remote, let's say this is our Roku remote, which actually, this thing is the Roku remote. Um, it's a universal RCA remote, Let's say that this is the remote. Oh, this is actually how I had to do the Roku commands because the Roku has a Wi-Fi remote, which is not in here. Yeah, it is. Has a Wi-Fi remote that does not emit IR. So there was no way to teach it IR, even though the Roku will receive IR just fine. So this particular universal remote, you can teach it to be a stream box and Roku is in the functions there. So basically I taught this to be a Roku, tested it out, made sure it worked. Then, I would go to the app, press like left arrow on the app, on the app, right? It would say waiting, then I would press left arrow here and it would say registered, and then that would be it, it's done. So that's the way I like to do a, a universal remote, especially something like this. It's just, you teach it the remote you have. Now if you lost a remote or if you don't have one, in this case of the Roku, that's a problem. Uh, I wish you could just look up IR codes online. Um, that's kind of how the Logitech works, but it forces you to do a whole configuration of a device. Like, it tries to be too smart, and it ends up driving me crazy. Anyway, um, that's what I got going on in here. You know, uh, the Wii. Oh, the Wii. I forgot to say that. Um, I have component cables for the Wii, but I ended up buying this thing. This, uh, where is it? Wii to HDMI. It's okay. It puts a little weird grain on top of the image, but I mean, it's 480p anyway, so. So it works and it makes it simpler so that I just have an HDMI and I'll switch that out if I ever use the Xbox again, which I haven't. Or I'll get an HDMI switch. I have three in my room. Um, not super a big deal. We don't use either of these all that much. Like I said, we've been rediscovering the Wii, but it's only for family time anyway. Put that back. It just makes it simpler to set up the Wii rather than plugging in a hundred component cables. Ends. All right, so that's all I have for you. Um, you guys have any questions on my setup or why I did things the way that I did, you can let me know. Um, mostly I was doing this video to test out some audio equipment. I've got a microphone here. You can probably hear me when I tap it. Yeah. 
Um, I wanted to have better audio because the audio on this camera actually sounds kind of bad, even because it's an action camera, you know, it's not designed for audio. But I like how simple it is to just point. Like, I cannot see the video feed right now. I'm just pointing at myself, and I know it's fine, right? It's fine. It, it handled the dark and the light and moving around pretty easily. Maybe it's a little shaky, I don't know, but we'll have to see. But anyway, I wanted a better microphone, so I got this thing and clipped it to me. Maybe it'll be okay in the wind, too. I don't know. I doubt it. I'll probably have to put a little windscreen on it. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about my setup, let me know. Um, this is what I've been working on. I know that it's messy and not clean, but all the stuff, all the technology works together, and I'll work on cleaning it. I need to make a, the computer a little tidier, that's for sure. I might get like a, a server rack case and put the computer in there and then make like a custom thing where maybe it'll be vertical instead of sideways and I'll just slide the computer in. That'd be pretty sweet. Uh, I don't like messing around with the tiny, tiny computer case because it's just, it's a nightmare to change anything. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know if there's any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.